Hi, this is Ahmed Alogaili and Manos Brilakis presenting case 169 for the manual of percutaneous coronary interventions. This is a case entitled the 3.5 mm stent for reasons that will become apparent in a second. The patient was a 64-year-old gentleman presented with non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. And as is commonly done at our institution, he underwent a coronary CT angiogram. This showed a subtotal occlusion of the proximal right coronary artery. This is the MIP, showing a focal lesion in the right coronary artery with some diffuse disease more proximal, some scattered classification. There is more classification in the left main and the LAD. This is a different projection, once again, demonstrating severe calcification in the left system and uh, focal calcium on the right. When we measure the length from normal to normal, it measured actually at 47 millimeters with a reference diameter 3.3 distally and 3.7 more proximally. And this is another system, the clearly system for analyzing the angiogram. Again, one severe disease in the right coronary artery. And um, what we can see here is the plaque composition. We're essentially scrolling through the occlusion. Yellow is lipid, blue is calcium. And what we're seeing is that it's mainly yellow, so it's mainly lipidic, but there are some calcified spots inside the artery. So this seems to be a soft plaque rather than calcified plaque. And uh, this is again the area of the minimum lumen area showing a fatty plaque in this particular spot. These are um, linear MPRs, and uh, there is uh, a lot of plaque where we put the calcium. Again, there's just a limited amount of calcium on the right coronary artery. And this is the coronary angiogram, which confirmed but was found. There's severe lesion in the right coronary artery. There were also some intermediate lesions into the LAD and the left main. And actually, just to make sure, we did do an IVUS of the left main, and the area was 7.9 millimeters square. Therefore, the left main, as the CT had said before, was not significant in the nose. We thought that a shorter stand, a 3038, would be enough, so we placed a 3038 drug eluting stand across the lesion of the right coronary artery. But of course, now the distal edge doesn't look good. It's because there's more plaque distally, which we didn't cover. And this is a reminder because the measurement based on CT was for 47. So we should have probably placed a 48 millimeter stand. But instead, we asked for another stand. We placed a 3.5 by 12 millimeter drag eluting stand more distally. But unfortunately, it doesn't look that great. So we placed the stand. And although it seems to be expanding, the vessel doesn't look quite as good as more proximal, which is surprising because there was not much calcium as we had seen on the coronary CTA. So we decided to do an intravascular ultrasound. And what we're seeing is that there's some diffuse disease distally. And um, there is, uh, we're going now into the area of the stand. And uh, essentially, the stand is swimming inside the other stand. What we have here is a much smaller stand than the originally placed stand, which is weird because we asked for a 3.5 by 12 millimeter stand. So what is going on? Well, it turns out the stand we placed, the second stand, was actually 2.5 millimeters. So we did use a 3.5 millimeter balloon, and that uh, expanded the stand well, and now we have a good stand expansion throughout the area of the stand. There is no more this uh, inside stand swimming inside the outside stand. Multiple lessons from this case. The first one is how CT and geography can help guide PCI. In this case, it pointed out that there was a single vessel disease. And actually, we didn't believe it in the left main, but the IVUS was confirmatory of the CT findings of no significant disease on the left. The interesting thing about this case is that we tried to place a shorter stand than what we can measure by CT. And actually, we ended up having to place another stand to cover the distal edge of the lesion. So planning the stand length by coronary CTA might actually be more accurate than planning based on angiography. There was a miscommunication regarding the size of the second stand. We requested a 3.5 by 12, but actually what was given and what was placed was a 2.5 by 12. So it is important to ensure that the communication between the operators and the staff of the cath lab is clear, and also it's good to verify. So the operator, we should have verified that the stand we got was actually smaller than the original stand. 
But because we did use intracardiac imaging, the problem became immediately apparent. The stand was smaller, and we did use a bigger balloon to expand it and achieve a nice final result. Thank you.